So an update I've been very curious about and waiting for with uh, bated breath is the project rebalance for Magic Gear, among some other things as well. Well, the proposal is finally here and we get to figure out what the hell they're going to be doing with the occult necklace, where that power is going to be landing, how they're going to be nerfing the Void Waker, and really how the game is going to be changing significantly in the not so distant future. <laughs> so they have a nice TLDR at the top here for those who are tired like me. Items are getting buffed. On the left here, there's a couple of nerfs, so really not that many in comparison, and just a few pieces of content adjustment, which we'll talk about that as well. Okay, so first and foremost, the thing I was most curious about, what is happening with late game magic gear? How much is the occult getting nerfed? Well, it looks like the occult is getting nerfed from a plus 10% magic damage bonus down to 4%. So they're stripping 6% away. And the reasoning honestly makes sense to me. I've always thought the occult was ridiculously powerful. I don't think any price point would really justify an item being that strong nowadays. They even give an example to show how broken it was. Who would kill the Barrows Brothers quicker? A player with just an occult necklace? Or a player with the full ancestral set, a Magus ring, eternal boots, and with Agrion? Well, the first player is stronger. They have higher magic damage. They would kill Barrows quicker because accuracy doesn't really matter against Barrows. 800k versus 454 mil. You can kind of see the problem there. So they're shipping 6% away from the occult and they're going to be distributing it across a bunch of different items. So first up, the Ancestral Robe set is getting buffed from a 2% magic damage bonus per piece up to 4%. So that's getting doubled, which means right now the entire Ancestral set is 400 mil. They're also going to be buffing the Virtus Robe set as well to increase it from 1% to a 2% bonus. Now it's not only late game gear that's getting changed, there are some mid game pieces as well. For example, the infinity rope set is going to get a 1% magic damage bonus on those pieces, although I don't think it counts for every single piece of the set. I believe it only counts for the hat top and bottom, otherwise there's five infinity pieces technically, so that would be disproportionately affected. The Dagonite rope set is also getting a similar increase, going from 0% to 1%. And even the Third Age Mage Armor is going up to 1% per piece as well. Uh, you know, it's a fashion escape item. I guess they're changing it for consistency's sake. And finally, Augury is going from 0% to 4% magic damage with this change, which is actually huge. So they actually changed a lot more pieces than I thought they did. There's only one item I really thought was getting changed that's not on here, and that's Eternals. The Eternal Boots, are, I guess, are left out to dry here. They're not mentioned at all. Those things are probably the weakest of any of the mage gear, so I'm kind of surprised about that. Now beyond that, a couple other thoughts. Early mid-game mage gear is now kind of rough when you think about it, because the occult was carrying the mid-game so hard. So you went from having a 10% increase with the occult with maybe a Zenite or something else to now 4% with, I guess, Infinity and Augury could maybe make up the difference, but it definitely has gotten a little bit harder for early game accounts. But with that said, a lot more magic gear does seem to matter with this change. So assuming you're using at least Dagonai, Infinity or Third Age, plus Augury, your damage has now gone up from before the change. Otherwise, your damage is lower than it would have been before due to the occult nerf. Another notable outlier here is actually the Arim's Rope Set, and they do mention that they're intentionally leaving it as a tanky alternative which means it's really just going to be left for a tanky niche at this point. As offensively, it is going to be just straight up worse than any of these changed items. And finally, one last thing that's worth noting is the Tumican Shadow is not affected by the magic damage bonus of Augury, which means if you don't have a shadow, but you have near best in slot gear, that is going to be brought closer in power to the Tumican Shadow, adding just a bit more granularity throughout the entire magic gear upgrades. So that is a ton of changes for magic, but now let's bring it to a simpler item, the Soul Reaper Axe. Now they mentioned they wanted to buff the Soul Reaper and they kind of are, but they're not directly increasing its damage. They are more so giving it a really strong quality of life buff to make it a lot more usable. So with this change, they're gonna make it so the Soul Reaper no longer instantly loses all its stacks upon switching weapons. You'll have 20 ticks or around 12 seconds without attacking, before the stacks start to 
decay. This will make them easier to maintain and just more usable in a lot more PVM encounters where you have to be switching gear or switching weapons, often making the Soul Reaper pretty much unusable. Next up here, we have the Elder Maul. It is getting buffed and a kind of more bombastic one than I originally imagined. Now, because the Elder Maul is a six tick weapon, they say that to give it a equivalent DPS to make it a just strong crush weapon would require the max hit would need to level half of Varrock. So instead, they're going to focus on making it a strong utility weapon, given a special attack that costs 50% spec energy, which will reduce your target's defense by 35%. So just for reference, a Dragon Warhammer reduces defense by 30%, which should make it a better defense reduction option than the Dragon Warhammer. Now next up here, another item that's getting buffed is the Inquisitor's Armor Set and the Inquisitor's Mace. Inquisitor's was made at a time where I think the entire community and the moderators were very concerned about power creep in old school, so we got this really watered down new endgame melee set that currently is only very nichely used and is incredibly rare from the Nightmare. So what they're going to be changing about the Inquisitor's Mace is the damage and accuracy bonus for this set is tripled when you're using the mace, which means that goes from a 2.5% accuracy and damage bonus up to 7.5% if you're using the full set, which will make it a stepping stone between the Abyssal Bludgeon and the Scythe, and is a pretty significant buff. Now one of the few items we knew was going to be getting nerfed is the Void Waker. Currently the Void Waker, when you use a special attack, ignores accuracy entirely, which means it's pretty much a guaranteed hit, making it an incredibly powerful spec weapon. Now they want to keep the thematic idea behind it, but they are going to be nerfing it. So instead of ignoring accuracy entirely, the Void Waker special attack will instead roll with a 200% increased accuracy and roll against your target slash or magic defense, depending on which one is lower. So if they're wearing melee armor, probably it's going to roll off their magic defense. If they're wearing ranged armor, probably will roll off their slash defense. So it's still a very accurate special attack, but is not a guaranteed hit. The Ancient God Sword is also getting nerfed, and I guess this is more tuned for PvP, as I don't see that many people using the Ancient God Sword in PvM. So they're now changing the Blood Sacrifice part of the special effect, which is the healing part, to now heal 50% of the target's maximum HP, up to a 25 HP cap. And I say overall, it's going to be pretty much unchanged in PvM, and this is more so a balance for PvP in particular. So those are the big parts of the project rebalance, but there's a couple other really big things here at the bottom. Starting off here with the Dragon Warhammer, the drop rate is actually going to be getting significantly more common. Now the Dragon Warhammer has notoriously been one of the longest grinds in the game for an item that is incredibly important, or at least has been historically. Now because there are a lot more late game defense reducing items out there, they're going to be making the Dragon Warhammer much more common, bringing the drop rate down to 1 in 3,000. Previously it was 1 in 5,000, so this is a 80% increase to the drop rate, and it's pretty uncommon for them to actually do this, especially on an item that's this old, but they're making it nearly twice as common. Now another set of items that have been historically really rare and long to get are Nightmare and Fasani's Nightmare items. Now alongside the changes to Inquisitors, there's also going to be changes to the drop rates from the Nightmare and overall everything is going to be made around 50% more common. For example, from the regular Nightmare, Inquisitors is going from a rate of 1 to the 120 to a rate of 1 to the 90. The orb loot table is going from 1 to the 600 to 1 to the 450. So this straight up the drop rates are finally a lot more common, which is a complaint a lot of people had with this boss, just how long it takes to get the uniques, and that's kind of what has been propping up their value so long, but maybe with some of the buffs to Inquisitors, their GE value won't tank too much. Okay, so one interesting change that they have mentioned before is going to be adjustments to your minimum hit. Now the way that combat works in old school RuneScape is, well, kind of old school. You first roll the hit, and then you roll to see how much damage you do. Which means it's possible and common in the early game to successfully pass your accuracy check, but then hit a zero. Which is quite punishing when you can only hit one damage to begin with. You're either hitting a one or a zero. Now originally they were straight up going to just increase the minimum hit just to one. So if you pass your accuracy check, you'd always at least hit a one. But this would actually have a knock-on effect on increasing the DPS of every single item in the game. So instead, they're going with a slightly 
modified version where your damage roll is actually going to be between one and your current max hit minus one which means if your max hit is a 20 you're actually going to be rolling between one and 19 or previously between zero and 20. this means that in the early game you will never miss a hit if you pass your accuracy check which means your dps in the early game is going to be significantly higher or at least the very very early game but in the late game you should be missing still a bit less often but your max hit is compressed in very slightly all in all jagex says the dps should be unchanged except for early stages of the game which is pretty hard to know if that's going to be the case but guess we'll find out Now there's a few other changes to the early game, specifically early game combat prayers. Things like thick skin, burst of strength, clarity of thought, sharp eye, and mystic will just drain so many prayer points in relation to their strength and you know the accounts that are usually using these prayers. So they are reducing the prayer drain rate from five points per minute to one point per minute. So your prayers will last five times longer if you're using one of these early game prayers, which I think is great. Nobody was using these really anyway. And prayer in the early game is rough, like you don't have any of it. You're not really using prayer potions, so why not make these more usable? And also, Sharp Eye and Burst of Strength will actually boost your range and strength levels by one if they're lower than 20. Now they're going with a flat number, I think, for these because numbers in RuneScape always get rounded down. So a 5% increase, which is what they were previously, would almost always get rounded down. For players who are using it so they're almost entirely pointless but getting a flat number will actually make them do something which i that's a good change so last but not least auto cast delay they are getting rid of it finally this has always been a really awkward thing with magic when selecting an auto cast option for a staff there's a one tick delay which means if you're switching magic gear a lot brewing and restoring auto cast is always worse but they are finally getting rid of it that's just nice and finally, a change I am really excited about, the Path of Atmakin and Baba in the third raid is getting changed. Pretty much they're making it so that enemies in the monkey room will always take the maximum damage when attacked with opposing combat styles. Thank you. This means if you're gear switching, you will always hit your maximum damage, similar to the Fremenic Warriors in the Colosseum now. Sure, the hit points have been increased for all the enemies. Overall, I think this is a great change. And they've also nerfed Baba a bit as well, making it so Baba hits less through prayer and reducing the damage overall by about 24%. So that's it. There is a ton of changes here and not only just the nerfs and buffs, there's some pretty significant changes to fundamental old school runescape as well. The game is changing so quickly right now. For better or for worse, there's so much going on in this game. It's hard to keep up. So as always, I'm sure you'll let me know what you think of the update down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.